All right, here are solutions problem 38 off the math subject GRE practice test. Um, so here we're dealing with a convex tengon, not necessarily a regular tengon, uh, but a convex tengon on the Euclidean plane. And we're asked, what is the maximum number of acute angles that this thing can have? Uh, I assume you know what an acute angle is. It's an angle whose measure is less than 90 degrees or between zero and 90 degrees. Um, and tengon means I got 10 sides on this polygon. And convex, uh, I drew a couple pictures for you. Convex, not convex. Definition of convex is a polygon is convex if you can take any two points in the interior of that polygon and connect them with a line segment, and that line segment is guaranteed to lie inside the polygon. So thinking about it, that would certainly work here, but here it wouldn't work because if I pick this point and I don't know, this point, and connected those guys with a line segment, it would leave my polygon here. So this is not convex, this is convex. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about here. Um, so one, I don't know, nitpicky thing, the maximum number of acute angles. Uh, they're really referring to what are called interior angles. Uh, those are also called internal or vertex angles. Uh, and why that's relevant is there's also an angle called an exterior angle that is often defined when we're talking about a convex polygon. Uh, and one way to solve this problem is to look at the exterior angles, not the interior angles. So I want to make clear the difference between the two. An interior angle is talking about this measure right here, for example, or this measure right here or up here. The exterior angle is talking about this measure right here. Uh, usually you only hear the term exterior angle when we're talking about a convex polygon. Because what ends up happening are the interior and the exterior angles are supplements of each other. Red is 180 minus blue, blue is 180 minus red. Uh, and that all works out fine as long as these interior angles here are all less than 180 degrees. How could they be more than 180 degrees? Well, here's a picture. This angle right here is certainly more than 180 degrees. It's what's called a reflex angle, I think. Uh, but at any rate, if you have a non convex polygon, what that means is it has interior angles that are greater than 180 degrees. So the exterior angles, either they wouldn't exist or they would have a negative angle measure to them. They'd get kind of weird. So usually people only talk about exterior angles when we're talking about a convex polygon, which we are in this problem. And so why am I making this distinction? Well, it turns out that the sum of the interior angles in any tengon uh, is always the same. Doesn't matter if it's convex or concave, the sum of the interior angles is always 180 times two less than the number of sides that you have. So in this case, it's 180 times eight, which is 1440, yeah, 1440. Um, so okay, that's a formula and I can justify that. I should, I'll justify that at the end of this video um, in case you already know that formula or you're not interested in the justification. That'll always be true. So the sum of the interior angles in a quadrilateral, a four-sided shape, would be 180 times four minus two. So 180 times two, AKA 360. The sum of the interior angles in a triangle, you probably know that that's 180 degrees. You come up with that as 180 times three minus one. At any rate, the sum of the interior angles in my tengon is 1440. Uh, maybe easier to deal with is the sum of the exterior angles. Um, it turns out that the sum of the exterior angles is always 360 degrees. Doesn't matter how many sides you have. Doesn't matter if it's a tengon or a triangle or a 55 gon, whatever. It makes no difference. The sum of the exterior angles is always 360 degrees. Doesn't matter if it's convex or concave, really. Kind of does. Um, if you have a concave shape like we have here, then some of the exterior angles are negative. So the supplement of this angle. But as long as you allow for that, they'll still sum to 360 degrees. But often people don't consider exterior angles when we're talking about concave shapes. So this is certainly true anytime you have a convex shape like I have here. And again, I'll justify where those come from. But if you believe these facts, we can answer this question pretty quickly. In fact, if you believe this second fact in blue here, we can answer this question very quickly. The sum of the exterior angles is 360 degrees. And then note that uh, a an acute interior angle implies an obtuse 
exterior angle. And either because that's obvious, look at the picture, or because, as I mentioned earlier, these guys are supplements of each other. So I, from if I take 180 and I subtract some number that is less than 90, I'm going to get as my answer some number that is greater than 90. But if you believe this, what I have written in blue right here, we can answer this question really quickly. The maximum number of, instead of acute interior angles, I'm going to say, what is the maximum number of obtuse exterior angles? Because as we saw here, they're in a one-to-one -one correspondence. So what is the maximum number of obtuse exterior angles in a convex tengon? Well, the sum of all the exterior angles is 360 degrees. And those exterior angles are always non-negative because my shape here is convex. So I'm adding up 10 non-negative numbers and I'm getting for my answer 360. How many of those numbers could have been greater than 90, aka obtuse? Well, you can't have four greater than 90 because then you're already above 360. But I suppose you could have three greater than 90, three 91s, for example. And that uses up, what, 273. And then for the remaining seven angles, uh, divide up that uh, the remaining amount, 87, however the hell you want, and you'll create a convex tangon. So it certainly does work with three, but cannot possibly work with four. One way you can get there is just noting that interior acute angles are the same as exterior obtuse angles. If you don't make that connection, that's fine. You can still answer the question by looking at the sum of the interior angles. So I have 10 angles here to play with. And I, when I add up the sum of those 10 angles, I need to get 1,440. And the question is, how many of those can be small angles? And by small, I mean less than 90, AKA acute. Well, it'll turn out to be three because it's the same question, but one way you can convince yourself of that fact is sort of thinking about a maximal case. And this isn't really a maximal case. You might not like this at the start, but stick with it. Um, I have 10 angles. Each angle can be at most 180 degrees. And you might already have a problem with that. You're like, well, could it really be 180 degrees? Because then you'd have a straight line here. Does that define a vertex? Uh, I think it does. I think that that's perfectly legit, but whatever. You might argue that instead of 180, this should be 179.99999, whatever. It makes no difference. Uh, note that it can't be 181 degrees because if we had an interior angle that measured 181 degrees, we'd be over here in this concave shape and we're told that our shape is convex. So I have 10 angles and at, at most, a given angle can be 180 degrees. So it almost seems like I could have a total of 1800 degrees, but that's not really true because they couldn't all be 180 degree angles. It wouldn't make this shape all meet up. As I know, the sum of my interior angles has to be 1440. So really, if you think about the excess, if I take this 1800 and I subtract 1440, what I'm going to get is 360 right here. And this 360 kind of represents uh, the excess that I have. So I cannot make all the angles 180 degrees. In fact, I have exactly 360 degrees that I have to subtract. So I'm starting out with my 10 angles and all of them measure 180 degrees. And in order to make my shape work out, what I have to do is I have to subtract 360 degrees from those angle measures, 360 degrees total. So maybe take off 10 from the first and 20 from the second and 15 somewhere else. Just make sure that they sum up the 360 degrees total. Okay, so I have a whole bunch of 180s here. Ten of them. And I'm going to subtract some numbers, so I subtract off 360 total. Well, I could subtract 36 from each of these guys. And then what that would give me are 10 interior angles, all 10 of which are obtuse. right? Because if I take 180 and subtract 36, I'm still above 90. So it's possible that I could have zero acute angles. Oh, right, here's a picture right here. It looks like I have zero acute angles. But that's not what it's asking me. It's asking me what is the maximum number of acute angles. Well, in order to make one of these guys acute, I have to subtract more than 90 degrees. I have 360 total to subtract. If I subtract more than 90 degrees, so maybe 91, how many times can I do that? Well, I could do it at most three times. 
because if I try to do it a fourth time, I'm now subtracting more than 360 degrees, more than my total excess. If I subtract more than 360 degrees, the sum of my interior angles will no longer be this required 1440 right here. So I can do this at most three times, and so the maximum number of acute angles I can have is three. Uh, quick justification of these formulas, the sum of the interior angles, the easiest way to see that guy is, it's kind of a cool little proof. Pick on one of these eight, no, 10 vertices. I have 10 vertices here, pick one. One's a special vertex, this guy right here, fine. It doesn't matter which one you pick. And the same argument will work over here, it turns out, but you have to be a little bit careful in terms of how you apply it over here and you have to kind of add and subtract angles. It's a lot easier to make the argument when you have a convex shape. Take that vertex and connect it to all vertices that it's not currently connected to. So I can't connect it to itself or either of these two neighbors, but I can connect it to all of the other vertices poorly because it's hard to draw on a computer. And what I've just done is I've divided my shape into, into eight triangles. How do I know there's eight? Well, because I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or because I originally had 10 vertices and I drew seven new lines. Why seven? Well, I'm not connecting to either of the two neighbors or itself. So I have the number of vertices I have, 10 in this case, but it really doesn't matter. Minus three tells me how many lines that I draw. But note that if you draw seven lines, you're going to create eight triangles because each time you draw a line, you create a triangle until your very last line, which creates two new triangles. So seven lines creates eight triangles. Eight triangles, the sum of the interior angles in a triangle is always 180 degrees. So what this is saying is all I, I can think of the interior angles in green here as created by summing up the interior angles in red. Note that if you look at all the interior angles in red, one, two, three, for example, and I did this for all of these triangles, added up all of these guys, what I would end up with is exactly the interior angles in green. I now have this one in green. I have half of this one. I have part of this one, but if I added them all up, I would get the exact same thing. So the sum of the interior angles in my eight red triangles is the same as the sum of the interior angles in my orig original Tengon. And because I know that the sum of the interior angles in a triangle is 180 degrees, maybe you take that as a given, all I have to do is say 180 times the number of triangles I have eight gives me the sum of the interior angles in green. Uh, to get to the sum of the exterior angles, you can do that a couple of different ways. You can do it with the supplement argument. The way that I really like it is, it's not a great proof, but it's kind of cool, I guess, is if I draw the exterior angles, so I extend each of these lines and draw these exterior angles. Sorry, this is taking a little while. Fine, those are my exterior angles right there. What I wanna know is what do those guys all sum up to? Well, think about if you stepped, if you zoomed way, way back. If I shrink this shape into a smaller tengon, I'm not changing these angles. If you suck this whole thing in, this angle measure would be the exact same. So this angle measure would be the exact same. I could make it so small that it just looked like a point right here, that all these vertices kind of converge to a point right in the middle. And then what I would have are all these lines sort of coming off that point. And my exterior angles would be talking about this guy and 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 this guy. And, this guy. and what you see, I didn't draw 10 of them here because I got a little bit lazy, is that my exterior angles, I kind of view as a circle around my really, 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 really small tengon here. And we know that there are 360 degrees in a circle, so therefore the sum of the exterior angles would ha also have to be 360 degrees. Sorry, I got a little nerdy, got excited about all this geometry stuff. I think these topics are pretty interesting, so I probably went into more depth than you need for this problem. But there's a couple easy ways that you could have solved this problem, uh, either interior angles or exterior angles, um, and making some sort of argument that way.